So here's the task you are facing and you are going to design a traffic light controller for the new you know, intersection. Um, so the picture on the right is the traffic light you will eventually put up. Uh, of course, it's a cyber physical system because it has those lights and you have, you can have these uh, LED lights, uh, you know, you can even have a, uh, um, you know, uh, timer uh, that display on, on the side of the traffic light. Um, it's, it's, you know, very basic uh, in terms of the control. You have uh, three different colors, green, uh, yellow, red, and you have a countdown timer, uh, which can be used to um, tell the drivers that, uh, you know, how many seconds left uh, on the slide. Um, so the sequence will be um, going from green to yellow to red and back to green, yellow, and then red again, like this uh, looping pattern. And there's one minute countdown on green and red, which I think is very generous. And then uh, for the yellow, uh, it's short. And so uh, the countdown timer is five seconds. And that's mainly for warning. And um, if the intersection is busy, uh, then of course we will um, you know, alternate this uh, lights through this pattern, green, yellow, red, and continues doing that. If, uh, for example, at evening, uh, midnight, um, there's no traffic. In that case, we will stop the rotation of these colors uh, after 10 minutes if there's no traffic detected. When you stop rotation, uh, what you have to do, of course, is you're gonna be setting red on uh, all the directions. Um, so uh, you, you don't, or I, I think you can do, go either way. You can set uh, red on one direction and then green on the other direction. Um, but you can't, you can't set green on all the four directions. Uh, that's um, you know, trouble. Uh, if you stop the rotation uh, for a while and there's a car uh, waiting at line, uh, you need to then start rotation pattern again. Okay, so that's the, the basic requirement. The last one is the fail safe control. Fail safe control is for the case where you had a uh, power outage. Uh, when you have a power outage, outage as you know, many of you have experienced, the traffic light, um, uh, some light will just you know, completely go off but some intersections, if they have backup power, they will change the rotation pattern to you know, flashing red on all the directions. Uh, when you see flashing red, you know uh, that is essentially a stop sign. So every car should stop and watch and then go um, you know, taking turns. So that's the fail-safe pattern. Uh, fail-safe control we, we set uh, at, the, at the last you know, point. So when we are given this problem, the first thing we want to do is to um, build such a model. This is the system model we're trying to, to uh, build or um, to have here. Uh, we need to understand um, what the system is going to be, um, what will be the main properties of the system. If you have uh, this traffic light of course, you have the lights, uh, you have several directions, uh, but before you actually put on the lights and hook up these uh, electronics and your microcontrollers, you need to you know, think carefully, what are the states uh, you want to capture the operation of the system? Um, the states could be you know, normal state, uh, like daylight, uh, day, daytime, so you have the rotating pattern and then also you have this uh, kind of evening state or uh, you know, uh, idle state where you uh, don't do the rotation. Um, so that's you know, one um, possibility. And even for these two states, you have even uh, new states to capture uh, you know, the uh, current light on this direction, red or 
um, yellow or, or green. Uh, so you have uh, another several you know, three, four states. And once you have the states, you need to then define the dynamics. The dynamics uh, refers to the, um, you know, the rotation of the lights. So how do you change from one light color to another light color? Uh, when do you change from the rotation uh, state to the idle state? Uh, what will be the um, criteria that you um, take this change, perform this state transition? What about boundary conditions? Uh, when you have, uh, let's say, a car uh, just happen to be in one direction and without, you know, the, the, the lights are, um, um, uh, let's see, the lights are uh, flashing uh, because it's just power outage. And then when you have uh, power restored, then what will, you know, how would the system behave? Um, do they, you know, do this, does the system suddenly just, uh, you know, uh, activate the rotation pattern? Or uh, does it, you know, go through some kind of ramp up, uh, maybe uh, countdown timer, um, all directions uh, before it restored to the uh, rotation pattern? So that, those are, you know, some of the things you have to consider carefully uh, before you put in the hardware and the software. As I mentioned earlier, for the states and transition of states, that's the most important thing for this example. Uh, you need to define states, for example, um, normal state, idle state, failure state, etc. And time intervals. Um, how would you um, model the time? Um, do you, you know, capture a, uh, let's say, one minute as the um, maximal um, in intervals and then use one second as the smallest intervals. So you don't go over one minute uh, and uh, you, whenever you go over one minute, you, you kind know, of reset the time to zero and keep counting up or keep counting down. Um, also for safe, fail safe control, uh, what will be the steps that you perform that? And do we do any you know, checking uh, or um, to verify these uh, fail-safe is indeed in place. So those are the things that you really have to um, consider carefully uh, when you design such a system model. Next thing is hardware. Um, for hardware uh, here, um, We're talking about several things, uh, microprocessors um, for inputs. Um, we have different sensors. We could have an ultrasound sensor um, to basically um, detect the, um, the cars. And we can have keypads and switches for emergency controls. For output, uh, in this example, in this application, the outputs are simple. Uh, those are the LED lights. Um, then for power management, uh, you need to consider whether you want to do some sort of AC to DC conversion, which often we do. And there, if there's a high power component you need to control, you need to use relays. Uh, for uh, fail safe, uh, you need to uh, invest in an uh, uninterrupted power supply, UPS to make sure that powers, the fail-safe um, operation can be implemented. Um, for microprocessors or microcontrollers, um, itself has abstractions, has models. Um, I just want to show you quickly a uh, data sheet of uh, the uh, Atmel Mega 2560 microcontroller screen. Um, this is the Atmel um, microcontroller data sheet. 
Now, when you work with embedded systems, when you build cyber physical system using embedded systems, um, you will be reading a lot of data sheets. In our course, uh, in all the lab assignments, you'll be reading some of data sheets. Um, you don't have to read from the page one to page 435 of this uh, you know, PDF file. What I'm saying is that if you use a processor, a memory chip, a I2C device, uh, a, even a button or a two-line LCD display, uh, you have to understand how uh, these systems work. You can regard these data sheets as the kind of the abstraction of the actual hardware. Um, you won't be able to you know, do anything or read anything if you just look at the chip. This data sheet tells you uh, what this chip can do. Um, there's many features uh, summarized in this page, um, you know, risk architecture, uh, the, a, how many general purpose uh, registers, uh, how many um, on-chip memory for storing the uh, programs. Uh, by the way, this is a microcontroller with uh, non-volatile memory uh, for the program memory, for the instructions. So this chip that you can program, and when, once you program, the, the, the code will stay in a chip until you uh, reprogram it again. Uh, also, oftentimes you are concerned or interested with these peripheral features, um, timers, uh, PWM channels, and also IO ports, etc. So for our uh, example, let's say we choose this ch chip as the microcontroller, then chances are you're gonna be using it for controlling the, uh, the lights using um, logic you know, levels. Let's say you want to um, turn on the light, uh, turn on one of the three LEDs, you're gonna be um, you know, uh, flipped a bit in a register to output a, a logic one to turn on that LED. Um, so if you do that, then of course you need to understand the IO uh, of it. So you can go into this data sheet, then find out uh, there's a chapter about IO ports. You can think about, okay, this is the model, the abstraction of this IO port of this chip. Then you will find, oh, it has a equivalent schematic. This schematic captures what is you know, built into the chip uh, from you flipping a bit in the register to actually output uh, on the pins. So this uh, circuitry illustrated here reflects the uh, electric, um, electronics uh, principle, how this uh, IO pin is uh, gonna be operated. If you look into further, uh, there are um, even more um, you know, schematics uh, detailed um, register, um, you know, bit uh, or names. Um, I just want to go quickly. For example, uh, for this pin, if you want to, you know, use let's say pin one, uh, it has a corresponding uh, DD one N or XN bit in this register selects the direction of this pin. Now, when you select the direction of this pin, um, we're talking about you know, digital output. So it's gonna be uh, either input or output. Uh, so if you have this bit written as a one, this physical pin is gonna be configured as a output. If the pin is, sorry, if the bit is written as a logic zero, the pin is configured as a input. And uh, if you configure the pin as an output, then you're gonna be writing to another register called port X uh, N uh, to output the logic, uh, either a logic one or logic zero to drive the voltage high or low. As a result, you can use uh, this pin to control the on and off of the LEDs. Hope you can still see it. Um, so I, I went over the data sheet. So that's the kind of the hardware model that you will be um, looking into. For software model, uh, of course, you want to understand the instruction set, 
uh, assembly language, uh, or you can program uh, using C or C++ uh, directly uh, or uh, indirectly onto the um, microcontroller. Uh, you may use libraries uh, if they are available uh, for developers. In the case of Arduino, uh, in fact, the IDE environment in, provide uh, a good set of libraries that you can use to um, interact with the hardware. And we'll show you uh, one quick example shortly. And of course, you need to understand the development flows and methods uh, before you uh, head out to doing the design. Okay, so the next thing I want to um, talk about is the uh, Arduino development flow. I tried to show you last time, uh, but the, uh, uh, the example wasn't um, demo properly, so I want to uh, do that again after I talk about, um, um, you know, give, I want to first, I want to first give you a quick introduction of Arduino. Um, Arduino uh, has um, a lot of different uh, development uh, boards, big or small, um, you know, based on the features available uh, on this board. And the microcontrollers could be different. Um, this particular one we show on this slide is based on Atmega uh, 2560 microcontroller. And in fact, that's the microcontroller I just you know, showed you, uh, the data sheet. This board uh, itself has a lot of IO pins. Uh, those are analog um, and could be digital uh, or pulse width modulation, or UART, I squared C, and SPI. This board uh, can be programmed through the USB port. Uh, also, um, you know, if you program using USB port, uh, you can at the same time power up this board so it can function. After you program it, you can take the USB uh, cable away and power it through this uh, DC jack. So uh, with that development kit, you can find a nine volt uh, AC to DC nine volt um, power input you can plug into here and then you can power the board. Um, the output from this board uh, can be five volts or 3.3 volts. Uh, most of the components you use is five volt tolerant. Uh, you can you know, use 3.3 volt if you are working with some you know, um, some components that uh, cannot exceed uh, this 3.3 volt uh, level. It's programmed using Arduino IDE, which supports C and C++. So when you have this board ready for program, uh, you will need to have, of course, the uh, Arduino IDE on your machine. Uh, could be a uh, Windows machine or Mac computer or a Linux box. Um, the Arduino IDE has support for all these platforms. Um, you will then run this development software, then you know, um, th through that, that software, you will uh, be able to um, write your program, compile, and then upload the program to Arduino board. Um, there are some um, built-in LEDs. This one is called the L uh, LED, which can be used uh, conveniently for testing purpose. Um, of course, you can connect uh, your other components through this uh, uh, extension port. And these are um, some of the uh, digital ports, some are analog ports, and some are uh, dedicated for um, communications. Once you open up this ID, you will find that uh, it consists of uh, many interesting and useful examples. And they call these examples sometimes sketches or libraries. They basically mean the same thing um, for our purpose. 
if you go um, from the file and examples, you can find some, uh, you know, come with IDE, so some basic examples, uh, which include this blink. There are examples about uh, buttons, uh, digital inputs and outputs, analog inputs, outputs, uh, sensors and displays, uh, even USBs. Um, so you can find all these examples that come with IDE. You can also install um, other libraries in the, um, that supports uh, certain uh, new hardware parts. Um, you can, um, you know, um, you can find uh, these libraries from oftentimes from the vendors of those hardware parts. Once you install these libraries, you can call functions uh, provided by the libraries. So if I have a, let's say, a, 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 I start with a blink uh, sketch or blink example, uh, and then because I can install another, let's say, step motor library, I can use this, this example, or if you choose, you can rename it uh, to include that um, new step motor um, object, if that's a C++ style uh, library, and then you can, um, um, basically, you know, quickly used the uh, functionality of the step motor. So this Arduino IDE helps organize the sketches and the uh, loading of the libraries. Once you have uh, this libraries installed, the next thing is uh, you want to, you know, compile the code and load it to the board. Uh, to do that, you have to do a few things. You have to choose this right um, board name uh, for our uh, lab kit. Uh, we use this Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. Uh, this is one option here. The processor is uh, Atmega 2560. Um, the most interesting one, or well, you know, uh, tricky one is the port. When you have your uh, Arduino uh, device uh, connected through the USB cable, it will show up in your system uh, as a series, uh, as a serial port. The port uh, name could be uh, like this one, COM22, if you are on a Windows machine. Uh, I'm using a Mac, so you will later see a different name, but uh, you should be able to see uh, things will show up on this menu and you can tell uh, by the name, uh, but make sure that you choose the correct port. Otherwise, your IDE will not be able to talk to the Arduino board. So I have a note here. Uh, this name could be different on your computer. Just um, you know, pay attention to that. Okay, so the blank sketch is the one I want to show you uh, right now. Um, just take a quick look at the code. Um, every Arduino sketch uh, has at least two functions. One is called a setup, one is called loop. Setup is the function that will be executed only once at the power on stage. Um, sorry, let me go back to here. So in this example, this pin mode 13 um, output will be uh, called. Uh, this is a built-in function. Uh, essentially, this line will be setting this port number our pin number 13 uh, as an output. Now, recall that when I uh, guide you through the data sheet, there's a one direction uh, register uh, associated with the, the pins, the IO ports. Um, when you um, execute this line, underneath this line will be um, translated, uh, will be implemented as setting that particular bit in the register to be a one so that this particular port can become a output port. And the next uh, function is uh, the loop function. Uh, the loop function will be executed uh, endlessly, uh, in infinitely. Um, so these four lines of code will be executed. Uh, what you can tell is this is the digital write uh, and to the same pin, output pin 13, and uh, it's gonna be outputting a logic one, logic high. So this is the uh, line 
which will be uh, translated to uh, instruction writing the port uh, X register or port X pin. Uh, this will be sending a one to that register, to that particular pin in the output register. As a result, the pin will be um, outputting a logic one, a high logic high, a voltage high um, to whatever um, component that we connect to. And because we um, have this pin 13 that's uh, connected to an LED in most Arduino board, so we can be able to um, basically uh, turn on that LED. Delay 1000, uh, this is to say that I want to wait for one second. Uh, this 1000 is actually 1000 milliseconds. Um, and then after that, I will set that to low. Uh, that means I want to turn off the LED and then delay for another one second. So that's the code. Um, once I have the code ready, I can click this check uh, sign to compile. Um, if there's no errors, then you can go ahead to do the uploading, uh, which is this button. Um, okay, so let me try to change this to a larger font. That works. Hope that you can see better. Okay, so this is the code I was um, just talking about. Um, so this is a blink uh, sketch. Um, it's the same as, almost the same uh, as the one I showed you uh, in the slide. Uh, this LED built in, this is you know, the um, default pin number that's connected to the LED. And then I set that to the output. And in this case, let's see, I wanna change back to 1000. So that's essentially the same thing I'm doing as uh, I explained in the slide. So I'm gonna turn on the LED for one second and turn it off for one second. So note here, uh, I have uh, my um, port number selected on the Mac. Uh, what I'm seeing here, the port is dev uh, slash dev slash cu dot usb modem thirteen twenty two zero one Arduino Mega or Mega twenty five sixty. So the actual device name does not matter much. Uh, what matters is the the name. So if you can see this, chances are you are connect you connected to the right port. Also for the processor, I want to make sure that it's Mega twenty five sixty, and uh, for the board. Uh, it's Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. If you use a different Arduino board, which is possible, uh, you can just change this, uh, uh, the board and also change the processor accordingly. Okay, so I have this program, uh, I have verified. Uh, it seems it's uh, correct. So I'm gonna um, program it. Uh, it's very quick uh, because this program, uh, the size is very small um, and uh, uh, so it's already programmed. So let me show you. Um, try to make it visible. Hopefully you can see that um, flashing LED at close to the top here. Um, okay, I think I'm blocking it actually here. Right. Um, so you can see it's about one second on and one second off. Okay, so I'm going to change this delay. Just maybe make it three seconds. In three seconds. So it's just a minor change. I changed the um, delay between on and off. And of course it should compile okay. And I'm gonna upload again. When we say upload, we actually you know, load the binary into this uh, 8 mega um, 2560 chip. 
So it's done uploading. Uh, so this time we should see it's off for three seconds and on for three seconds and off three seconds and on for three seconds. 